Section 3 of Lovecraft's Influences and Favorites. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Avai in February 2019. The Little Red Kitten by Lafcadio Hearn. The kitten would have looked like a small red lion but that its ears were positively enormous, making the head like one of those little demons sculptured in medieval stonework which have wings instead of ears. It ate beefsteak and cockroaches, caterpillars and fish, chicken and butterflies, mosquito hawks and roast mutton, hash and tumblebugs, beetles and pig's feet, crabs and spiders, moths and poached eggs, oysters and earthworms, ham and mice rats and rice pudding, until its belly became a realization of Noah's Ark. On this diet, it soon acquired strength to whip all the ancient cats in the neighborhood, and also to take under its protection a pretty little salmon-colored cat of the same sex, which was too weak to defend itself, and had been unmercifully mauled every night before the tawny sister enforced reform in the shady yard of the old Creole house. The red kitten was not very big, but was very solid and more agile than a monkey. Its flaming emerald eyes were always watching, and its enormous ears always on the alert, and woe to the cat who dared approach the weak little sister with hostile intentions. The two always slept together, the little speckled one resting its head upon the body of its protector, and the red kitten licked its companion every day like a mother washing her baby. Wherever the red kitten went, the speckled kitten followed. They hunted all kinds of creeping things together, and even formed a criminal partnership in kitten-stealing. One day they were forcibly separated, the red kitten being locked up in the closet under the stairs to keep it out of mischief during dinner hours, as it had evinced an insolent determination to steal a stuffed crab from the plate of Madame R., Thus temporarily deprived of its guide, philosopher, and friend, the speckled kitten unfortunately wandered under a rocking chair, violently agitated by a heavy gentleman who was reading The Bee, and with a sharp little cry of agony it gave up its gentle ghost. Everybody stopped eating, and there was a general outburst of indignation and sorrow. The heavy gentleman got very red in the face and said that he had not intended to do it. Tonnerre d'une pipe, nom d'un petit bonhomme. He might have been a little more careful. An hour later the red kitten was vainly seeking its speckled companion, all ears and eyes. It uttered strange little cries, and vainly waited for the customary reply. Then it commenced to look everywhere, upstairs, downstairs, on the galleries, in the corners, among the shrubbery, never supposing in its innocent mind that a little speckled body was lying far away upon a heap of garbage and ashes. Then it became very silent, purring when offered food, but eating nothing. At last the sudden thought seemed to strike it. It had never seen the great world which rumbled beyond the archway of the old courtyard. Perhaps its little sister had wandered out there. So it would go and seek her. For the first time it wandered beyond the archway and saw the big world it had never seen before, miles of houses and myriads of people and great cotton floats thundering by, and great wicked dogs with murder kittens. But the little red one crept along beside the houses in the narrow strip of shadow, sometimes trembling when the big wagons rolled past, and sometimes hiding in doorways when it saw a dog, but still bravely seeking the lost sister. It came to a great wide street, five times wider than the narrow street before the old Creole house, and the sun was so hot, so hot. The little creature was so tired and hungry, too. Perhaps somebody would help it to find the way. But nobody seemed to notice the red kitten, with its funny ears and great bright eyes. It opened its little pink mouth and cried, but nobody stopped. It could not understand that. Whenever it had cried that way at home, somebody had come to pet it. Suddenly, a fire engine came roaring up the street, 
and a great crowd of people were running after it. Then the kitten got very, very frightened, and tried to run out of the way, but its poor little brain was so confused, and there was so much noise and shouting. Next morning, two little buddies lay side by side on the ashes, miles away from the old Creole house. The little tawny kitten had found its speckled sister. End of section 3